Type 1 diabetes mellitus is an autoimmune condition where insulin producing cells in the pancreas are destroyed. The pancreas may be divided into exocrine and endocrine. The exocrine pancreas is organized in acne and ducts used to carry its secretions which are mainly bicarbonate and digestive enzymes. Now the endocrine pancreas is organized as islets of Langerhans and contains cells that secrete insulin, glucagon, somatostatin, ghrelin and pancreatic polypeptide. The cells that secrete insulin are the beta cells and they are the focus of this video. Firstly, we will understand the physiology of insulin production and secretion and then the pathophysiology of type 1 diabetes and the common clinical presentation of such. In normal physiology, beta cells will secrete insulin in response to a rise in blood sugar levels as insulin acts to promote the uptake of glucose by cells and tissues and the synthesis of glycogen, both of which will reduce blood sugar levels. Insulin is encoded on chromosome 11 and is firstly transcribed as a polypeptide chain called preproinsulin. Preproinsulin is cleaved, forming proinsulin as it enters the endoplasmatic reticulum. Proinsulin travels to the Golgi body where it is packaged into vesicles together with proprotein convertases, which will convert proinsulin into insulin. Proinsulin comprises of the amino acid sequence of insulin and a peptide fragment called the C peptide, which is cleaved. Once exocytosis occurs, both insulin and the C peptide are released. Therefore, the C-peptide is an important measure of the amount of insulin being produced in the body. Beta cells secrete insulin by the following mechanism. First, glucose enters beta cells by action of the GLUT2 transporter. Glucose is then metabolized through glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation, leading to the production of ATP. ATP-sensitive potassium channels then close, resulting in the depolarization of the beta cell membrane. Consequently, voltage-gated calcium channels open, which increases intracellular calcium concentrations. This induces the exocytosis of the insulin-containing secretory vesicles. Type 1 diabetes mellitus may in fact be divided into type 1A, which is immune mediated, and 1B, which is non-immune mediated. The majority of patients with type 1 diabetes have type 1A, and type 1B is also known as idiopathic diabetes, meaning that the cause is unknown. And it presents almost complete insulin deficiency with no evidence of autoimmunity. Type 1 diabetes typically manifests in childhood, with a peak incidence around the time of puberty. What happens is, beta cells in the pancreas die, this being due to natural causes, as occurs to all cells at some point during development, or due to an infection, for example. Beta cell antigens and cellular fragments that are released during cell death are taken up by macrophages, or dendritic cells, which become antigen-presenting cells. These antigen-presenting cells travel to pancreatic lymph nodes, where T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes will present receptors for these beta cell antigens. Upon contact with the antigens, T cells activate the immune response and B cells start producing antibodies. This is an abnormality as the immune system should not be triggered by an autoantigen. However, this process is halted by regulatory T cells as it recognizes that that is not supposed to happen. 
due to reasons that we don't fully understand, this regulation stops at some point and the immune system proceeds to destroy pancreatic beta cells. This process takes a few years and that's why type 1 diabetes is usually only diagnosed at childhood. The lack of beta cells means insulin is not being produced and therefore the patients become hyperglycemic, which means having too much sugar in the blood. Since the body cells are not able to take in glucose, tissues are not able to produce ATP from glucose, and therefore protein and fat starts being metabolized. The brain needs a constant supply of energy for normal functioning, and so through the metabolism of fatty acids, ketone bodies such as acetone are produced. These will provide the brain with energy. Acetone is excreted from the body through the lungs, which will give the type 1 diabetic patients the characteristic fruity smelling breath. Also, patients with type 1 diabetes will present with polyuria, which means frequent urination. Glucose levels are so high that it is excreted in urine and due to the osmotic pressure, water follows, so there is an increase in urine output. Due to the increased amount of water lost in urine, patients also present with polydipsia, which stands for increased thirst, in order to replace the water lost. Moreover, due to the inability of cells to take in glucose, the patient loses weight as the cells are starving despite the abundant supply of glucose in the blood. Finally, patients present with polyphagia, which is increased appetite since the cells are not getting glucose. This increased hunger, however, will not go away after eating and will only contribute to even more elevated blood sugar levels. Type 1 diabetes is a serious condition that must be closely managed with daily insulin injections. If blood sugar levels are managed correctly, the patient can have a normal and healthy life. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe.